beautiful costume you have on. Maybe it's the most beautiful here at night. It's really interesting. Oh, come. People are... I've, I've seen some fantastic things here. You couldn't possibly mean that. <laughs> are you all black revolutionaries? You bet your ass. <laughs> It's, it's a beautiful place, right. That's what people say, it's a beautiful place. But the Hamptons has its hell holes. They say, well, those black people, they live across the tracks there. Okay, that's a rundown, uh, low income or poverty area. Okay, we don't want anything to do with that. We don't want to look at that side, really. I think that's really what a lot of people say, you know, because by them traveling out here from time to time, I think they do know that the place exists, but it's just that they don't want to, they don't want to deal with that portion of the community. I've been here for uh, 26 years, and uh, uh, I was working on the farm when I first came here, and now I'm landscaping. What do most black people work at here? Landscaping and farm work. That's the most they got to do here, and to the traders. What's that? That's the tater house. And the tater house don't open up till about August. The summer is the three main months of Bridgehampton, which people are really out humping, you know, their asses off, trying to make it for the winter. You know, trying to get that extra money to carry over, that mortgage for the winter. Because they know during the winter they may be laid off. Or they, they may be just without a job, period. The summer people may pack up and just cut out. You know, but they're going back to their nice, bad apartment, you know, laid out, you know. And these people out here, shit, well, where, where are they going? I applied as a VISTA volunteer late in... 1971 and uh, I got a letter saying that I'd be assigned to the New York region which encompasses uh, an area including Newark New Jersey and the area surrounding that and New York City upstate New York the Virgin Islands and Long Island and at the time my family was sitting around when I got the letter and when we looked at Long Island we kind of laughed because we assumed that, you know, just from friends that we had known and everything, that it wasn't a poverty area, that it was quite a wealthy area, as a matter of fact. And uh, the last day of training, we were given our assignments, and I found out that I was assigned to Bridgehampton, Long Island, New York. And even all the, the, the VISTA workers there kind of said, well, where's the poverty? Where, what's this Bridgehampton? This is a resort area that they're sending you to. You know, you're one of the luckiest vistas, you know. There's no poverty out there. Well, this is Bob Shell, Shell Camp, right off of Flanders Road. And this is the camp right here. And right here is, is the living room. It's a bedroom here. Then this is the bullpen. What they call the bullpen. We the bullpen. There's more men sleeping here and to do the private room. That's for you know, some women, you know, live in a private room. But this isn't where all the men's be. And there's a man right here. Hey, mister? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's it like living here? How does that make you feel? Me? I don't ever think about it because most of the time I'd be drinking, you know? And they get one meal uh, on, on, on the weekend. And look, now, what they gonna eat? Water, uh, RC, and nothing else. Flower, look at that. Look at the junk. This ain't no way nobody to live. And look, that's what he feed them. That's what he feed them. What is it? Twister. Wine, twister, and can spam. And they paying that much money a week for it. What's your life like now? Tell me about it. Right now? Right now, you mean? Yeah. Oh, well, probably I said pig. I put it like that. 
the peak. You miserable, right? Because I don't have enough to leave, I don't have enough to stay. Some of the colored folks have been working for me already over 25 years. Their mother and father used to work for me, and then the sons worked for me, and now the grandchildren is already starting. That's how it carries on. How much uh, do they make? Well, they, they, they get a good salary. Uh, I would, I would, they, they're now, right now, a good man that can drive a tractor, he gets, a colored man gets two fifty an hour. Is that enough for a family to get by? Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I couldn't answer that. I know I got by, I got by for a lot less than that in the Depression. When I come, got with him in Florida, I got drunk and he put me on the bus. I come, when I come to myself, I was on Jetty Time Pipe. So I said, man, where we going? He said, I'll take another bottle. So by me drinking, I just drank another bottle, you know, and then I woke up and cut your labor camp. So the next morning, he come up and said, hey, man, let's go to work. I said, go to work, why? He said, catch that truck. I said, man, I ain't catch no goddamn truck. From one world to the other until his engine come out there. So what I had, I do not have no charge but catch the trucks. So I went on out there and worked in the potato, so I, I worked all the week. So everybody was standing in line to get a check. So when, when, when we were lining the check, when he got to me, he did the rest of guy just like he did me. Give me $2 a pint of wine, and, and, and I gave him some lip by the man, I don't work like this. And so I got an ass with him behind it. So I took it. From then on, I, that's the way he paid me. $2 a week. And we making, we working from 6 in the morning to 12 one at night. Couldn't do nothing about it, cause I was in debt to him. Then he tell me I want this, and I, every time we get paid off on Friday, he said, "Well, I'm gonna give you two dollars and a couple of pints of wine, cause you draw fifty dollars and you owe me sixty-three. Well, I couldn't do nothing about it. Right on Monday morning, do the same thing. So I did it for about five years. Any man ever try and run away? Yeah, he, uh, me, and a, and a bunch of more. Tell me about that. Well, he caught us down there by the uh, dump and pet in our in our cut show, and they surrounded us. And then we well, we didn't know know where to go but the highway, you know. We didn't know no other way to go, so we caught us and jumped on. And then he said, "Y'all going back?" We said, "Yeah, we will go back." So just don't jump on us no more. Some of them head butted, nose bleeding, eyes swollen, and I right in the middle of them. So we went on back. Then he said, huh, here y'all a couple of pints of wine. Y'all go on and be good niggas and quit that bullshit. The white folks got this town. They got me under the cover, so what can I do? I can't do nothing, really. Honest to God, I'll tell you the truth. I'm black, and I can't do nothing. Telling you, God help me. I want to live decent. You know what I mean now? I want to have me clean clothes, nice place to stay, and that's all. And plenty of something to eat. That's all I want in life. And I'm going to have that. If I had to work day and night, I'm going to have that. Now you can leave it. God knows I'm going to have that. this morning, making our way to the house of the Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for what you've done for us and what you're now doing. Thank you for what you're going to do for us. We pray that they will look on this sick and afflicted, hear that everywhere. Bless, O oh God, our neighbors. Bless the community. Bless this town in a special way. Look on the universe everywhere, Lord. Pray that I will take us through now. Higher, height, and deeper depths in thee. Bless us now. Keep us and guide us and teach us. Take us further in our services in the name of Jesus. Peace.
blessing and others asked in his name, whom so worthy to have the praise. Yeah.